In this bass lesson, I'm going to teach you a bunch of really useful two string bass arpeggio shapes like this. Now, this is G major seven. And what I'll do first is just run through these arpeggios that come from a harmonized G major scale. And that gives us four different arpeggios, which I'll go into in a second. Here they are in order. So there are lots of different ways that you can play arpeggios, different patterns, starting on different fingers. But really for this lesson, I'm just going to focus on these ones that I use these quite a lot, especially for warming up and exercises, but also in playing, and we'll get onto that later. So first one, major seventh, we have this shape here. And that's what I mean by two string arpeggio shapes, because on the E and the A string, if we just take the F sharp and the G, the B and the D, which I'm playing with fingers one, two, and one, four. That shape can then be moved very easily up one octave. Just move everything two frets higher and two strings down. You get this. Same thing again. Right? So you're just, I'm a very visual person, you're just moving one pattern once. Now, be sure that you know that the G is the root in this. This is G major seven arpeggio. So the F sharp is the major seventh. And these diagrams are notated with the interval inside the dot. So that means major seventh. R is root, G in this case. The B is the third, and this is just the notes within the scale. B is the third, it's a major third. And D is a fifth. That's all that is. So that's that twice. We happen to get that on the four chord as well in a major key, the one and the four chords, in this case, G and C, this is the key of G major. They're both the same, major seventh. So that means you can do the same thing starting on the seventh fret of the E string, the B. If you play it like that, it will sound like an exercise. There's nothing wrong with that. You can use this as a technique exercise, and it sounds really good. But what if we wanted to make it sound a bit more like a bass line? I've got a drum beat going here. I'm gonna play something. I'm gonna do the same thing, actually. I'm just gonna stick with these two major seven arpeggios, G major seven to C major seven, and play something with those patterns. <laughs> You know, I don't think I would ever play a bass line as busy as that, but I'm just exploring now and I suggest you do the same. Let's move on. So we had G major seven. Now in the key of G major, the two, the three and the six chords are all minor seventh. And this is the pattern we can use now for this, this two string arpeggio pattern. So G, A, C, E. So the G is the minor seventh, then we go to the root. I think it's really important to know the intervals within the notes that you're playing. And I think it's very easy to learn on a bass. You know, there's a root. This is A fifth fret e, e string. That's the root of this. This is A minor. And you just find all the time that the flat seven is just two frets lower than the, than the root. And you just learn that. And it's really, it just comes to you over time. That's the flat third or minor third. And that's that five again. So if you just learn that pattern and then put that up the octave, we're essentially learning one pattern and moving it once. I'm using fingers one, three, one, four, like this. That involves a little bit of a shift and a stretch. But you can use your second if you feel that's easier. It's even more of a stretch, but you can use that if you want. 
that. It's a very good workout. It's a very good workout for the muscles in the hands and to get the stretch going. Let's do something with that. All I did there when I changed the chord is I just went from A minor 7 up two frets to B minor 7. It's the same arpeggio. That's the 2 and the 3 in G, as I was saying before. I just like these patterns. I think they're really useful on a four string bass especially. But you don't have to think of it. You don't have to play all the notes, you know, if I just go at this. And then just stop there. You've got a nice little pattern there. Let's do something like that. You see you can make up bass lines with this, it's just, it isn't just a technique exercise, it isn't just working on shapes for the sake of it, I think the more shapes you know the better. Right, G, A, B. The C was that, same as the, first, the one chord again, that's the C major 7. So, so far we've got a major 7th, a minor 7th, a minor 7th and a major 7th, and now we have something different, a dominant 7th arpeggio. This is the 5 chord, this is on the D, like this. I think it's very useful to look and to see and to hear the difference between these different arpeggios. Now we have the root is D, that's the 10th fret. We have a major triad, which is a root, a major third and a fifth, just as we did on the one and the four. But this time our seven is a flat seven, not a major seventh. That's the only way that a dominant seventh arpeggio differs from a major seventh, it's just flat seven, and I can see it's there. You can also say that it differs from a minor seventh by having a major third and not a minor third. The more you do this, the more you see that pattern. You, it's interesting and it helps you learn it as well, I think. Let's play around with the dominant seventh on the five, the D seven, and that one we just did, the E minor seven. It does help you get quite a few different notes to play with. Like if I was on the D7 there, I just went like this. You could make up a fill like that. Might be a bit too busy, but you don't have to use all those notes. You can do whatever you like with this. I'll just stop on that D7 quickly. So I've got two, one, four. I'm talking finger numbers here. On that, the D, the F sharp, and the A. That's the root, the major third, and the fifth. And I'm just reaching my first finger two frets lower than the root to get that flat seven. And again, it's just a leap of faith to go one octave higher and play the same thing. If you had a five string or a six string, you would just play the same patterns. You would just extend them, okay? Everything I'm playing now is rooted on the E string. You could root it on the A string as well. You would run out of strings very quickly, but you still get the shapes. That's D fifth fret of the A string. That's the D seven again. So we did the E minor seven. And so far we've got three different qualities of arpeggio. Major seventh, minor seventh, the dominant seventh, and now we have the final one within a major key anyway, which is a minor seven flat five or half diminished. This is it. This is F sharp minor seven flat five. 
It's a bit of a mouthful that, but we have the flat seven to the root, flat third, and this differs from a minor seventh, a normal minor, uh, minor seven arpeggio, where we have a flat five now. I'm using my little finger for that. This sits very nicely under the fingers here, one finger per fret. Then I'm, there's my, my seventh, the flat seven, and I'm just looking for where the octave is above that, and that's where I'll start this pattern all over again. There it is. And in each of these arpeggios, you have to make a bit of a leap of faith to get there. But it's a really good practice to shift there. This is one way of practicing it. Just go up the, the G, the, the example here is in G major. Just go across all the arpeggios in that key. Don't have to go to the root every time. You can go from the lowest to the highest, then the other way, like I just did there, like this. I've got loads of lessons about patterns on bass, and all the pattern is really is either a scale or an arpeggio or a mode. It's, it's some kind of musical device. And there are tons of them, absolutely loads of them, and you can start them on different fingers. I really just wanted to do restrict ourselves really in this lesson just to these two string patterns that you can shift around. And I think that can be quite helpful sometimes when you practice just to do one thing and not move around. But if I just show you something here now, if I wanted to make it a bit more musical and I was practicing to this, I'll just play and I'll show you what I was doing. I'm going to use more shapes than just one. And this is very random, I'm making this up on the spot, it's not great, but I just stuck on the G and I just did this. This is very, I did major pentatonic, I love that. It's another pattern I really like. And then I, you may have caught it, I did, I did a little bit of the shape I showed you here. That's just major pentatonic again. But things to do for now, download for free the PDF of the exercise and the different shapes. Play it just up, you can go down as well. You can alter the rhythms, you can alter the order of the notes, and then do what I was doing before where you just stick in the key of G major and just make up some bass lines going through some different chord progressions. Doesn't have to start on G, can start in the middle here. Let's go to the, from B minor to C major, why not? That would sound really good if you laid down a B minor chord and then a C major chord and played each of the arpeggios over it. Then you can start to compose music as well as working on technique and these different shapes. Don't forget to play this in different keys. Try to move the shapes into different strings as well. You know, you could start it on the D string. You know, and so on. You can just do two strings starting there. And be musical with it, make up bass lines, make up chord progressions, see where you go with it. Thanks very much for watching. See you next lesson.